Today we're continuing our series. It's based on Psalm 23, and we're going to call this series Stress Busters. Because we're looking at the antidotes to seven of the most common causes of stress. Last we look, last week we looked at worry, and today we're going to look at busyness. Does anyone not think that busyness is a problem in our society? <laughs> it is. A lot of us always are saying we're just way too busy. It's an epidemic almost. And so we're going to look at a prescription for people under pressure from all this busyness. Workaholics, constant busyness, that's not the kind of life that God wants for us. He doesn't want us to feel all that stress. He wants us to chill out, relax, have his peace in our lives. And so we're going to be talking about that. Psalm 127 and verse 2 says, It is senseless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. So, this is a word for you. God wants you to have your proper rest. To not just be working all the time. To not be just a, a, a slave to all this business and to all this work out there. Many people think that if they give my life to God, you know, just if I really sell out to Jesus... All that's going to happen is she's just going to give me more work to do. That's not what God wants to do for us. Psalm 23, 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Now, does that sound like a taskmaster that wants to just put a whole lot more on you? No. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Just think about it. Laying down in green pastures, looking up at the sky, feeling the breeze go over you. Isn't that just a kind of a peaceful feeling? Uh, uh. And he leads me beside quiet waters. Just hear the trickling of the waters next to you there. Now, doesn't that have a feeling of peace? That's what God wants for your life. He wants peace. This is a picture of quiet and peace, not overwork and busyness. These images represent rest and refreshment. That's what these images represent. Rest and refreshment. God wants you to live a whole, balanced, and complete life. He doesn't want you working all the time. And if you really give your life to Jesus, he's probably not going to add more on. He's more likely to take some things out of your life. He's probably going to quiet your life down if you'll give it to him 100%. If you'll listen to him and if you'll follow his advice and his guidance, he's probably going to remove some things from your life that's causing you that stress that you don't need to be doing. He's not there to add on more. He's there to sometimes take things away from us. A CNN poll recently said that 59% of all Americans would like to slow down and relax more. Well, guess who's at fault for that? Themselves. 59% say that they want to slow down. A Harris poll said that we have 8.5 hours less leisure time than we did a decade ago. So we're working more and enjoying life less. Doesn't sound like God's prescription. That's not what God wants for us. So here's a prescription for God's people. Relax God's way. And RELAX is an acronym, R-E-L-A-X, RELAX God's Way. So the R stands for Realize My Worth. The reason most people overwork is because they confuse their work with their worth. We think that if we work hard and achieve much, we're worth a lot. And that's the way we measure success. That's the way we measure our value is by how hard we work and how much we achieve. We confuse what we do with who we are. In America, we tend to get our primary identity from what we do. And you know that's true. Because whenever you meet someone, after you find out what their name is, what's the very next question usually? What do you do? What do you do? That's how we establish a person's worth. And people will either answer in a very proud way or sometimes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm such and such, you know. And they even can see in their eyes and in their 
the way their body reacts as to how worth they think they are because of what they do. And so we need to be careful about that. We get our worth from our work is the way people tend to think, but the Bible doesn't teach that at all. And that's what I want us to look at today. Some people grew up hearing, you're a nobody. You're nothing. Maybe they were told this by a teacher or a friend or a sibling or worse yet, by a parent. Maybe a parent who said, you're never going to amount to anything. And some people overworked to say, I'll show them. I'm going to prove my worth by my accomplishments and my achievements. And that's the driving force in their life to prove themselves worthy by how hard they work and how much they achieve. But you never accomplish enough to feel satisfied. It never really fills up the hole in your heart that you think you need to do by all of those achievements. Many hear that inner voice that says, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep working. You've got to prove your value. You've got to prove your significance by how hard you work. But the antidote to this is to realize what God says about you. James 1.18 says this, God decided to give us life through the word of truth so we might be the most important of all the things he made. You see, God says, you matter more than all the rest of creation. You are my most cherished and loved of my creation. We don't have to prove our worth. God's already told us we have great worth. We were made by God. And we're worth it because God don't make no junk. He doesn't. And so he didn't make any junk when he made you and when he made me. And you have worth simply because God says you are the greatest of my creation. So if we really understand our worth to God and really feel it, it will change our life. It will change our perspective. It will change what we think about is what gives us worth in our lives. You see, you don't need to spend your whole life trying to win the approval of other people. That's what a lot of people do, but we don't need to do that. You don't need their approval to be happy. But what you do need to realize is how valuable you are to God. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 26, Your heavenly Father feeds the sparrows, and you are far more valuable to him than they are. Again, he's trying to indicate your worth, your value over the rest of creation. And if God takes care of birds, don't you think he'll take care of you? He will. He loves you. He cares about you. You have worth in his eyes. And he will take care of you. There is nothing you can ever do in this life that will make God love you more than he already does. And there's nothing you can ever do that will make God love you any less. Because his love is not based on our performance. A lot of people think that. It's because maybe they were raised that way. Maybe they felt from their own parents that that love came based on their performance. When you're good, you're loved. When you're bad, you're not loved. But in God's eyes, his love is unconditional. It's not based on on our performance. It's an unconditional love that's based on who he is. He has said, I love you. That never changes. Never changes. No matter what we do, he loves us. The E in relax. E stands for enjoy what I already have. Enjoy what you already have. Ecclesiastes 3.13 tells us, All of us should enjoy what we have worked for. It is God's gift. But many are so preoccupied in getting more things that they don't even enjoy what they've already got. Think about that. People that buy all these toys, and they think that this is is what shows how how successful I am and and all of this that I can enjoy, but they're so busy working to get those things, they don't even have time to enjoy them. How dumb is that? 
So can we get so busy to desire to acquire more and more that we don't enjoy what we've already got in our garage? Yeah. Jay Leno, (laughs) they showed his garage one time. He's got, I don't know how many cars, but it's a lot of cars. I mean, he could drive a different car every day of the month. He's got at least that many cars. Now, how can you really enjoy each of those cars? You can only drive them one at a time. And so, you know, we can get so busy acquiring that we just don't have time to enjoy them. We have these beautiful homes, but nobody enjoys them because nobody's at home. They're at the office working. We're staying up late at the office. We try to keep up with the Joneses, Joneses, not realizing that they're in debt up to their necks and they're ready to file bankruptcy. And we want to be just like them. We want to try to keep up with them. Why? To be in debt and be under more stress? We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't. We try to get more and more and we get overextended financially, so both mom and dad now have to work to make ends meet. And I know that that's a tough decision. But sometimes I think it's, it's a better decision to try to back off from our financial responsibilities and allow mom to stay home with the kids if it is at all possible. You see, that's just not the way God wants us to live, being always so busy, all of us, all the time. So Ecclesiastes 4, 6 says, It is better to have only a little with peace of mind than be busy all the time. We need to get away from that rat race. You know, I've never had one person say on their deathbed, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. It's never happened. Many have said, I wish I'd spent more time with my kids, with my wife, with my husband, with my friends, or, or spent more time building a relationship with God. They thought about other things when they were on their deathbed, but not one has ever said, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. That's not where our value and our worth comes from. So enjoy what you have while you've got it, and don't be worrying about getting more all the time. That's not where your worth comes from. The L in relax stands for limit my labor. You know, we have to make a conscious decision to make time for other things. I have to decide how many hours I realistically want to spend working each week, and then I need to stick to that. You need to schedule for yourself uh, time for yourself, and time with God, and time with your family. And limiting our labor is especially important for two particular groups of people. Those who are self-employed, that's a tough one for them. If you're self-employed, your tendency is to never stop working. You're always working. You're always thinking about work. You bring home work. You never take any time off. You're not in a nine-to-five job, and you keep the work with you all the time. And it's just so tough when you're self-employed. And you can fall prey to this if you don't limit your labor and set aside that time for yourself and for your family and for God. And the second group that it's hard for is single parents. I don't know how you do it. Work and manage a family at the same time, it's just, wow. That's a terrifically hard thing to do. And single parents need to learn that as well, to set a time some time aside for themselves. And the problem with that is, and I know it, it's, it's like saying, well, yeah, I know I need to, but then i got to hire a babysitter and I don't have the money for doing that. Well, you know what? Single parents, find other single parents that you can trade off with. That they'll babysit your kids so that you can get away, and then you babysit their kids so that they can get away. There's ways to do it if you want to work at it and find that way to do it. You can do it. And Ecclesiastes 10.15 says, Only someone too stupid to find his own way home would wear himself out with work. Is that plain enough for you? (laughs) You know, we need to not do that. 
A lady called a pastor one day upset. She said, I called you all day Monday and couldn't get through to you, pastor. The pastor said, well, Monday is my day off. And the lady said, well, the devil never takes a day off. And the pastor said, yeah, and if I didn't take a day off, I'd be just like him. So Exodus 29 through 10 says, You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is to be a day of rest dedicated to me. If you're not taking a day off, it means you're breaking his commandment. He's mandated that for us. Think about that. With all the other commandments, including murder and adultery and lying, one of them is take a day off. Rest. Take a Sabbath. Mark 2.27, Jesus said the Sabbath was made to benefit man. I didn't include this in here, but something that I did read was that uh, way back in Napoleon's day, the French people, the nation there, made a law that there were to, they were to work seven days a week. There was not to be any days off. And they did that for months and months and months, and finally they repealed the law. Because everybody was getting so worn out, they weren't productive. And so they went back to giving everybody a day off. You see, you just can't keep working and keep going. Body is not just made for that, and God didn't make us that way. Colossians tells us it doesn't matter what day you choose, as long as you choose one every week. You have to choose a day off. Mine's Friday, by the way. If you call here on Friday, you won't find me here. My day off is Friday. See, Sunday is a work day for me. In case you didn't realize that, it is. Sunday's a work day for me. So this can't be my Sabbath. And so maybe it is your Sabbath. And that's great, and that's fine. But God wants us to take a day off. And you can choose any day. Colossians says it doesn't matter as long as you choose a day to take off. So what should you do on your day off, on your Sabbath? Well, you don't use it to catch up on work you haven't finished. Again, that's not the time to bring home work from the office and try to catch up on it because you got a day off. No, that's not using the Sabbath the proper way. Number one, we need to rest our bodies. If you don't take time to rest your body, your body will make time to rest itself. Either in a hospital or with a cold or a flu, you'll have something that'll come up that your body will be forced to take some time off. So it's better not to go that far. Just make that rest time every week, one day. Do you feel guilty when you relax? Jesus didn't. Jesus took time off. You think you're better off than Jesus? (laughs) You think your work is more important than Jesus? But he took time off. He did. Number two, recharge your emotions. That's the next thing you want to do is recharge your emotions. You may need some quietness. You may need some recreation. Whatever it is that recharges you, do that during the, on that Sabbath. Do whatever helps you to recharge emotionally. Three, you need to refocus your spirit. The Bible calls this worship. Worship brings things into perspective. And when you come into the church with a big, big problem, Worship tends to put things in perspective for us. It tends to ease our mind and help us to refocus our spirit. You have more energy to deal with the problem and more understanding because we need that time alone with God. And that's one of the other things that we need to do is find that time to spend time alone with God. And if you're too busy for God, you're just too busy. You need to make God a priority. The A in relax stands for adjust my values. In order to reduce busyness in our lives, I have to change my thinking about what's important. We've talked about that. The fact that God must be most important. And then family. And then your job, third. And sometimes we need to adjust those values as to what we consider to be the most important. Ecclesiastes 4.4 says... I've learned why people work so hard to succeed. It is because they envy the things their neighbor has. It's that old keep up with the Joneses. 
I've got to have what someone else has. Mark 8.38 says, What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? So ask yourself this question about every area of your life. Is it worth it? Is it worth keep doing this? Or do I need to evaluate and reevaluate my priorities here as to what I should be doing? What are my values here? We may be making great money right now, but are the kids getting any parenting? So both of you are working, you're bringing in the bucks, but what's happening with your kids? They're, who are they learning their values from? Are they learning it from the school or from their friends, from others? They should be hearing it from you. And they need to have time with you. You see, they're going to be gone in just a few years. And ask yourself, will I regret that? That I didn't spend more time with my children. Because no matter how much you make, you can lose it all anyway. A lot of people have lost fortunes. Those come and go. I know people have lost uh, millions of dollars over and over and over again. They can come and go. But your family is there and they need you. The E is exchange my pressure, or the X rather. It's actually supposed to be on the X, the underline there, because that's the X. That's okay. Exchange my pressure for God's peace. This gets at the very root of our stress. You see, there's three kinds of fatigue that we can be dealing with. There's physical fatigue because we're just tired. Our muscles are tired. Our bodies are tired. We're just physically tired out. And there can be, and that can be replenished pretty quickly. We have bodies that sort of recuperate pretty well. And we can can get rid of that fatigue and come back pretty quickly. And then there's emotional fatigue. That's our tired emotions and our feelings. Our inside spirit is just sort of emotionally drained. And then there's the spiritual fatigue, a dry spirit. And this is some of the deepest fatigue that we can have when our spirit is just done. It's over with. We, don't, we feel so separate and apart from God. We just don't know that we can ever get there again. And you may need a vacation. But see, a vacation only helps uh, with the first one. It doesn't help with these last two. It may, it may recharge you physically. But it doesn't necessarily help with the emotional and spiritual fatigue by going on a vacation. You need to do more than just take some time off to recharge your emotions and focus your spirit. You need more than just that. And I want you to look at this video and see if you maybe see yourself in this video. Watch this. It's a little grainy, but you'll get the picture. It's so grainy, it's hard to see, isn't it? Hard to see, isn't it? It's not there. Try to get it if you can. Put it someplace else or something, and we'll come back to it if we can. But what happens is we can take a two-week vacation and we can still come back and you can still have the same problems. You can still feel tired. You can still feel physically and even emotionally sometimes drained and tired after two weeks of vacation. How many of you have said, I needed a vacation after my vacation? Why is that? Because we didn't take the proper kind of vacation in the first place. We take a vacation and we cram all this stuff in there. i got to plan every day what I'm going to do. Sometimes we just need to relax, chill out. I remember when when we went to Hawaii with Steve and Janice, and they were saying, boy, you know, we really enjoy vacationing with you guys because you know how to relax. Evidently, other people that they vacationed with, they always wanted to do something all the time and just kept so busy. You know, I want to just chill. I want to relax. Sit by the pool. Do something that I don't normally do. You know, I can go to malls and, you know, do other things. You know, I want to see the sights, yes, but, you know, 
go see a sight, and then come on home and relax. I don't want to have to come home and feel like, wow, i got to relax now. No, that's not a vacation. You need to chill. You need to really take that time. See, the pressures are still going to be there when you come back if you haven't dealt with what's happening inside and how you need to change some things inside. It means more than just taking time off. It means readjusting my values and exchanging my pressures for God's peace. You ever tried to put a little child down for their naps or for at night? They never want to sleep, do they? They still want to keep going. It's a sign of immaturity. We understand when we go to sleep, we need to go to sleep. You know, kids don't. They're still ready to go. But they need their sleep too. And David recognized that sheep were a lot of the same way. They didn't want to sleep. And so Psalm 23, 2 says, He makes me lie down. See, the good shepherd makes his sheep relax. Makes them lay down, chill, take some time off. And God wants to do the same with us. He wants us to lie down. That's forcing it. But that's what God wants to do. He wants to make us lie down. So has God ever had to make you lie down? Has he ever had to make you slow down and relax? Well, if you don't slow slow down, sometimes God will make you lie down in a hospital bed. That's not the way you want to do it. You need someone who will help you set the pace of your life so you don't go too slow, because there's that end too, or too fast. The only person wise enough to do that who knows you inside out, who knows you better than anyone else is Jesus Christ. And we need to know him, and we need to have a relationship with him, and we need to allow him to be the pace setter for our life. You need a relationship with him so that you can exchange those pressures in your life for his peace. When you live for God, it's It's not only the right way, it's the healthy way. It's the balanced way and the most relaxing way. So Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28, 29, Come to me, all of you who are tired and have heavy loads, and I will give you rest. The load I give you to carry is light. Are you tired? Are you stressed out? Are you weary? Maybe you need to take into account some of these things to to realize that you don't have to work so hard to get your worth. That you need to spend time enjoying what you already have. That you need to limit your labor. You need to adjust your values and exchange those pressures for God's peace. Do we have the video yet? No. Great. So if you're stressed out, try to do some of these things that we've talked about here. Jesus says, come to me. I'm not going to load on you more on you. Instead, I want to give you my peace. Do you know Christ this morning? Do you know his peace? That's the antidote to busyness. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we can get caught up in that rat race. We can get caught up in in having to work so hard and and all the things behind that and and just wear ourselves out. And Lord, you don't want us to do that. You want us to have your peace. So Lord, for those of us perhaps here that need to hear this message, speak to those hearts and help them to slow down, to readjust their values and exchange all that stress for your peace by giving it to you. Lord, speak to our hearts this day. May we go from here feeling your rest and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray.